Welcome to the screen capture demo on how to set up Git and GitLab with IntelliJ. This is pretty difficult in my opinion. So the first step is just getting to the GitLab web page and logging in. We're doing this on a Macintosh, by the way, the latest version of the Mac OS. So we enter our username and password. And since we're doing this from a new device, we have to do this dual authentication with the telephone. So I'm putting in my telephone code. This is a one-time administrative task. <clears throat> so now I create a new project. This is the GitLab web page. I create a new project. I give the project a title. A very imaginative title, by the way. And then I check the appropriate user options or uncheck the appropriate user options. I uncheck the initiate repository with a readme and then I create the repository. And here we see it's quite useful actually. The uh, list of GitLab, com the Git commands that you need for a command line interface with GitLab in order to push and pull code in and out of the repository. We're actually going to use one of those commands. So this part sets up the local Git client and the local Git repository with IntelliJ. It is, uh, I ran into a little problem here, which I'm going to actually show in the screen capture demo. So the first step is just making sure that Git is not already installed. You can check in the lower left corner. It should be an option there if it's installed, but here it's not an option. So then I go up to the menu and I choose to install Git because it's not installed yet. Remember, we're setting this up for the first time. I get an error message and then I click on the error message to download and install the Git client. And the download actually takes quite a long time, even with my high speed connection here at the university. So I actually sped this part of the video up by a factor of 20 in iMovie, the download part. And after the download, this is actually where I ran into a, a slight hiccup or a part I wasn't expecting. So after it downloads and installs, normally what you do is you just go to the, the, v, the VCS menu and hit Git. So I'm looking to see if it's installed actually in the bottom left. I don't see it. So I go back up to the Git and hit hit Git again, and I get another error message that it's not installed or can't find the, the Git client. So I'm a little bit confused at this point, and I'm looking for a solution as to why it didn't work. And then I realize, okay, I'm going to just quit IntelliJ and restart it which used to not be necessary, but for this time, for some reason, I had to quit and restart IntelliJ to get the Git client running. Yeah. 
So I quit and restart. And after quitting and restarting, the git works. <laughs> so here you can see the log in the console interface to the git client. And you actually have to con press um, control, let's say control K or control or command K to get the git interface up and running. And then we can see the list of files that we can commit to our, repo our local repository. We can list them by directory. So we check them all essentially, except for the class files. We don't check the class files. Those are normally not version controlled. It's normally maybe the configuration files and the source files, the source files being the most important. And then we add an initial commit message to our git first git check-in to the, this is for the local repository, by the way, on your local machine. And then we just hit the commit button, add a username and email. And then we can look at the log messages. There it says we succeeded. We can look at the log to see what it says, the git log, and then we can look at the console messages to see what they say. Right, created all these, these uh, local commit files. The next step is to generate a personal access token on GitLab. So this is so we can commit the code to GitLab. So we give the token a name or the, the GitLab asks for a token name. That's not so important. You can choose any name you want. I've d decided to have no expiry date there. And the, the, the user options are read and write to the repository. By the way, you can find these instructions in the description of the video. So there's the personal access token. We're going to need that in order to uh, push the repository to GitLab. So now we're pushing it from our local Git repository to GitLab. So first we have to find the project. I have a bunch of projects there, so you won't necessarily have to do this part. There's my Hello World project. And then I have to choose the right command. That's for pushing a directory. So there's the git command for pushing a directory to GitLab. I copy that. I copy and paste that into the git client. So that's the one command we need. So this is me entering the, the remote folder to push the Git local Git repository. And then we have to enter our username and password to GitLab. But this time, instead of entering a regular password, we're actually um, copying and pasting the personal access token. So we go back to the GitLab and then copy and paste the personal access token. And that will give us access to GitLab. And there we can see the files that we're about to commit. And we hit the commit button, watch the log or the console, look at the messages to make sure it works. Right, there's a success message. We can look at the log too to see what it created. 
So it created this new new branch in the repository, the GitLab repository, right, with our initial commit message. We can look at our initial commit message. And then it makes sense to just verify by looking at GitLab and see, okay, did my push just work? I should be able to now find it on GitLab, right? So I refresh the project and then I look, okay, where is my project? There it is. And then I look at the source and there's my Hello World program that just got pushed. So I hope you found that screen capture demo helpful. I know it's very popular and I hope you enjoy the rest of the module.